In this video, I'm going to show you the TypeScript utility types that I use every day in my job as a full stack developer. The utility types that I'm going to cover in this video are all built into TypeScript, but if you have a search around on the internet, you'll find some that other developers have created. The utility types that I'm going to cover are emit, pick, partial, required, record, and my two favorite, parameter and return type. I'm going to use this simple user interface throughout the demonstrations. So the first utility type that I use all the time is emit. If you're familiar with Lodash, you're going to be familiar with how emit works because it's going to work the same as Lodash's emit, but with types. So we can create a new type called user profile. And I just want this to be a type of user, but with just profile information. So I can say type user profile equals emit. And the first argument is the interface that you want to emit from. And then you can supply a list of parameters. So the first parameter I'm going to supply is password. And then the next parameter I'm going to supply is just going to be email. So you can see here that we get a new type and we have our name, age, phone, address, and city, but we don't have our password or email. To use these utility types, you can either use the type keyword and create it how I've created here, but you can also use the interface keyword. So I can say interface, user profile interface extends emit and then I can pass in my emit and then we just need to have the interface brackets here and this is going to work exactly the same as our type except I think type is just a little bit cleaner because you don't have to have these redundant brackets on the end here. Pick is going to work a lot like emit but in the opposite direction. So we're going to be able to pick items out of our interface. So I can say type user profile pick is equal to pick. And the first argument again is our interface. And then we can just supply a range of properties that we want to pick out. So I can say, I want my phone. I want my name and I want my email. So when should you use pick? And when should you use emit? Well, I think mostly it comes down to personal preference. But one thing to consider is that if you add new properties to user, they're going to be included in your user profile and they won't be omitted. So to omit them, you're going to have to modify your user profile type. However, with pick, if you add new properties, by default, they're not going to be inside user profile pick. And you're going to add, need to add them explicitly to say that you want to pick them out. Personally, I use emit more than anything, and that's because generally when I'm creating new interfaces, I'm just going to remove a couple of properties. But if I had lots of properties to remove, and I had more properties to remove than I wanted to pick out, then I would reach for pick. The next utility types are partial and required. And these two are related, just like emit and pick are related. So if we have a look at our user interface, you can see that we have lots of required properties here, and then we have three optional properties. Partial is going to change all the properties on our user interface to optional. So I can say type user partial is equal to partial. And the first argument again is our interface. And you can see here now that all of our properties are optional. Required is going to do a similar sort of thing, except it's going to do it in reverse. Type user required is equal to required and then we're going to pass in our user interface so you can see here the properties that were optional before are all now required i tend to not use required very often and i also try to avoid using partial the reason i try to avoid using partial is because generally it's used to define inputs to a function and then those inputs are all optional you can, however, extend this. Let's say we wanted to create all of the properties as optional, except for name. We could say that user partial is equal to partial user and name, and then we define name as a string. And if we have a look now, we can see that we have our user partial, and then we have name is mandatory. So I can say const user, and we'll set this to user partial, is equal to, and you can see that we have an error here, and this is because name is required. And if we put name, it's Tom, then our error goes away. 
We can do the same with user acquired. Let's say that we wanted to have city as optional, but all of the other properties required, we could say, and city is going to be a string. And now we have all the properties of user acquired, except for city, which is going to be an optional string. A utility type that I use all the time is record. So record allows you to construct an object where you can define the key and then you can define the type. So let's take a quick look at what this actually looks like. Let's say const users is equal to, and then we can define an object here. And I can define users as record. And then the key is going to be a string. And then I can define my object that is going to be the property. So let's say I had an object that was const data equals, and then we had a key of key, and then a property of number. Then the record for this would be record string for key. And then the second property would be number. And this would be the correct type for this data property. But instead of number, we want to define an object here. And we want to give it some properties such as name, which is going to be a string. And you can see now that key is not assignable to an object with a name of string. Let's say our record has an object as the value. And we're going to have a name, which is a string. If we give this some properties, I can say the key is one. And then we have an object here. And we're going to get some IntelliSense for name, which has to be a string. If we say name is a number, we're going to get an error here. That's not correct. One place that I use record all the time in is reduce functions. So let's say I have this data here, which is an array of objects, and it just has a name and an age property. And I want to change this array into an object. I can say data.reduce. And then of course in reduce, we have a callback. And the first argument is going to be our accumulator. The next argument is going to be our current value. And then the third argument is going to be an index. We want to put our results into an empty object. And I first need to return the accumulator. Let's assign this to a variable called result. And let's have a look at the type of result. And you can see result is just an empty object. And this is no good. We can do better than that. Let's say accumulator string index is equal to our current value. Okay, so we know the result is going to be something like a key of one and then the current value. So that's going to be name and that's going to be a string. And then we have age, which is going to be a number but that type isn't reflected in result. So what we can do is we can type our accumulator as a record. He is going to be a string because we've used the string constructor on our index. So we can type this as a string. And the next property is going to be our accumulator, which is name and age. So let's copy this, paste this in here. Now, when we hover over a result, we get a record with name and age. Let's say we want results and we want results with a key of one and then we call dot we get age and name so the final utility types that i'm going to show you are parameter and return type and these are my favorite because i don't use them that often however when i do they save me a lot of time and they make my code look much cleaner so parameter is going to allow us to assign the parameters of a function to a type so let's say we have a function called create user And in this function, we're going to have a username and I'm going to omit the type from username for now. And we're going to have a password and then we're just going to return an object with our username and our password. Let's say we needed to assign the arguments, username and password here to a type. We can say type create user input is equal to parameter. And then we can say type of create user. And sorry, this is 
parameters, not parameter. So you can see here now we have an array of arguments, username, which is any, and then password, which is any. And the reason we have any here is because we haven't typed our username or password. So let's go ahead and type those as strings. And now you can see that we get a better type definition here. What happens if we want to use this in a function? So let's say const data, and we can type this as create user input is equal to Tom and a password of one, two, three. Okay, so data matches the input of create user input, which is inferred from create user. However, when we go to use this, we're going to get an error. So I can say create user data, and we expected two arguments, but got one. Why did we get one argument? Because we have a single array here, which is one argument, but on create user, we have two arguments. To fix this, we simply need to spread our array into the arguments of create user. And now we have perfectly valid input. Commonly though, you're going to have a single object as your function's arguments. So let's demonstrate that here now. We can have this object with username and password. And now create user input is an array with a single argument that is an object. This is not what we really want. We just want this object here. So we can get this out by putting some brackets here and then we can say number. And this just means get any index of this array. And now our type is an object. Alternatively, you can use the zeroth index and that's going to do the same thing. But I think number is just a little bit more TypeScripty. So our data here is wrong now. We need to create this as an object with username as Tom and password as one, two, three. It does not have an N on the end. And now we can just pass our data in without spreading it. So let's say we needed to create a type that is the result of create function. Let's say create function does some weird funky formatting on our data, and we want to create a type from that formatting. Well, we can use return type for that. So I can say type create user result is equal to return type. And then we have type of create user. And now create user result is going to be our username and password. Let's add another property on here. So I'm going to call this secret. And then this is just going to be one, two, three create user result now has a secret string. Let's change this to a number and it's going to be a number. One little gotcha that you might face is if create user returns a promise. So let's change this to an async function. And you can see now that create user now returns a promise and our create user result is a promise that returns this object. But this create user result type is now not as useful as it was. Well, we have this awaited utility and then we can pass our return type inside of awaited and we get back to having our object. So just remember that if you have an async function or a function that returns a promise, you can get the awaited type using the awaited utility. So that is the TypeScript utility types that I use every day. If this video has been helpful, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified every time I release a video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.